So you might have seen our video a little while back where we chopped up a GTX Titan so it could fit in a single PCI Express slot with a card installed right next to it. That mod included water cooling though, and we thought, why don't we try and do one better? What if we made a single slot card that's air cooled? Alex, why don't you quit your bitchin' and get to work? So get your angle grinders revving because the GTX Titan is going on the chopping block once again. Experience MSI's GS63 VR laptop now with NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1070 Max-Q. Check it out at the link below. Making a double slot card the height of a single slot card with air cooling isn't particularly easy. If it was, then this would be a lot more common than this. This video has been a long time in the making. So we got to work measuring every important bit of the Titan to make a SolidWorks model, which we'll actually link if you guys want to make your own mod to one of these for whatever reason. With the model for the single slot adapter made, it was time to print. Now PLA filament would pass the glass transition temperature when the Titan was stressed, turning into a deformed blob. So we ended up using ABS. With the 3D printed part in hand, well, one thing became clear, and that's that our calipers hold a zero like a drunk hits a bullseye, but all the critical dimensions were close enough, so we just needed to perform a little bit of uh, massaging to get everything to uh, you know, kind of fit together. For our next trick, then, we'll need a low-profile fan. Thanks, cooler guys! You have everything. Now, we were hoping to cannibalize the fan and mount it where the original fan went. But unfortunately, this press fit bearing holder prevented us from doing so. So it was time for super cannibalization with this angle grinder. And the savagery continues. The wonderful cooler mounting plate for the Titan. Well, I'm afraid that anything that was going to be too high to fit in a single slot was going to have to go. Excellent. So everything seems to be coming together fairly well. Let's move on then to the final step, which Brandon dubbed torture porn for nerds, <laughs> chopping up the heatsink. Originally, we thought that just the good old angle grinder would do the trick, allowing us to relatively easily slice through these thin fins. Unfortunately, that ended up taking too long and grinding aluminum is actually really sketchy. So we moved on to our favorite method of heatsink chopping, the reciprocating saw and, oh, oh God, oh no, oh please stop. Oh, the humanity, oh, no. Oh. Like we said before, using an angle grinder or a reciprocating saw, those would be terrible ideas. So we ran out and bought a belt sander to ensure that we didn't cause any more unnecessary harm to the heatsink while we cut down its size. It really is amazing how much easier things are when you have the right tool for the job. With the heatsink now at the right height, we just had to remove any loose bits of aluminum because if one of those crosses the traces on the PCB, it's game over and then slap it all together. It's actually a little bit easier to assemble now than stock since there are way less screws. So that's a plus. The fan mounts with some strong double-sided tape. The see-through panel had to be glued onto the outside instead of the inside, like on the original model. But I mean, this was so that we could maximize the area of the fins because in truth, having the glass on the inside would have meant about 20% less cooling. Unfortunately though, when we went to test it, the fan wouldn't work, possibly because of the grinding. We could have gotten another fan, but if we're being honest, that just wasn't going to be enough airflow anyway. So we went back to the drawing board and designed a 140 millimeter fan to dryer vent adapter and a new single slot cover inspired by server GPUs without a hole for the fan. The good people at my mini factory printed that up for us. The parts arrived and we could finally smash them into the computer as hard as you guys are smashing the like button right now. 
So we bolted the adapter to a Noctua 140 mm industrial fan at max speed and then squeezed it into the case. Before connecting the dryer vent to the graphics card, we added some foam to the back to prevent the dryer vent from shorting anything out. We then attached the vent the red green way, lots of duct tape, and finished it off with some tuck tape for that industrial quality seal. Now it just needs to be encouraged in and we're good to go. Oh my God, what is this? Wow, this actually looks like shockingly not shit. I mean, the dick butt is sort of unnecessary, but uh, does this work? Where does it exhaust from? Okay, that seems to be a bit of a design flaw there. Yeah, did you not think to maybe cut vents here like single slot graphics cards usually do? Okay, 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 okay. Oh boy, oh boy, oh buddy, oh boy. You better shut this baby down before you overheat here. And while we could have spent the rest of the day taking it all apart, modifying it carefully and putting it back together, it was easier to whip out the saw and hack off the last inch of the cover to give it some breathing room, which hardly helped at all. Of course, it thermal throttled again because our heatsink was crazy restrictive and getting almost no airflow. Also, this whole thing was kind of a dumb idea. Alex did the calculations before he even started the project, and no matter how much air you push across the fins, if they're that size, you're not gonna get the cooling needed for a Titan. So I guess the real takeaway from today's video is that math exists for a reason. Yeah, some of us already knew that. Ring, ring, who's there? Nobody, this is just my hand. But if I was using a real phone and I was calling Ting, the mobile carrier that's focused on customer satisfaction, I would be talking to a real person. No robots, no automated phone tree, no nothing, because they actually care. And what's crazy about that is you don't pay extra. Ting users pay only for the voice and data that they actually use, with the average bill being only 23 bucks a month per device. And if you're stuck in a contract, they'll even cover 25% of your cancellation fee up to $75. I mean, that could be three months of your cell service. Pfft. They even have lower mobile data rates than ever before with data now just $10 a gig beyond the first gig. So head over to linus.ting.com. We've got that linked in the video description and try out their savings calculator. It'll tell you based on your last few bills and your usage, whether you'll save money on Ting. Then when you sign up at our link, you'll also get 25 bucks in service credit or towards a new device. So thanks for watching guys. If you just like this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed and maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.